buster. Right. So I wasn't saying that we wasn't even cool. I said we was cool until this point right here. Right. You you, you mentioned the disc record. I, I heard about the record last night. I ain't heard it yet, but I heard about the record last night at like what, two, three in the morning? Yeah, like two, three in the morning, my phone get the texts and call like, look, homie did that, homie did that. I don't know if I'm more shocked that dude actually say my name in a song that's a diss record right. or the reason why the people say he say my say my name. Mm. I used to fall with God until we turned into a buster. What up, gang? Back with the real. You know what's the deal. It seems having friends in the hood isn't out of the normal, but remaining friends is where it seems to be taboo. Friendship between rappers from the streets always seem to fall apart. But the worst is it begins falling apart because of breaking the bro code and over things that a phone call or conversation was solved. This is even realer for the beef between Gucci and Gotti. Both were homies taking over the industry, then one falling out and everything went to waste. From betrayal to disrespect to love triangles, whatever bond that was there seems to be all hate now. Time to see how these two OGs became bitter enemies. Let's chop it up and break it down. But before I do, drop in the comments what situation you want us to cover in the next video. Back in the early 2000s, hip hop was in an entirely different space from what it is now. No skinny jeans, no mumble rap, and hood dudes was making it out the trap with bangers that taught the masses of their struggle and street lifestyle. Two of these rappers in particular that were making a name for themselves is Yo Gotti and Gucci Man. At the time, both weren't the bosses that they are now. Back then, they were the old school version of themselves. Raw, uncut, pure hood mentality. Both had their name buzzing in music, but also had their street credentials. Gucci grew up in Atlanta and became known as the infamous ice cream man, Mr. Zone 6. One of his most savage moments for ever putting him in the Gangster Hall of Fame was during the height of his beef with the snowman, Jeezy. On May 10th, 2005, Radrick Davis, also known as Gucci Man, allegedly got caught lacking by some ops. Gucci was kicking it with a female friend he visited at her Decatur apartment when she opened the door and five men dressed in black stormed in with tape, a gun, and brass knuckles. Reports state that they threatened to shoot Gucci Man and punched him in the mouth and pistol whipped his female companion. It continues to state that witnesses heard a scuffle and gunshots and saw the men flee the apartment with one asking another, are you hit? The one who was hit walked by the witness and ran into the woods while the other three ran the other way and left in a truck. The landlord of the apartment told authorities it looked like a burglary. However, Gucci's lawyer felt otherwise and said it may have been a setup by the female. Basically what happened, um, to make a long story real short, he visited a young lady, um, went over to her place, um, she was there, he was there. At one point, she opened up a door, five guys come running. Like it usually is. The man that got shot would later be identified as Henry Lee Clark III, also known as Pookie Low. After he was found lifeless a few days later outside a nearby school, then it became exposed what really happened. Pookie Lope was young Jeezy's artist, and that hit was allegedly put out on Gucci's head by Jeezy. Gucci would beat the hit charge on self-defense and release the cult classic Jeezy disc, The Truth, where he raps, a $10,000 bounty put it on my neck, hope you didn't pay him cause they ain't have no success, and go dig up your partner bet he can't say shit, and if you looking for the kid I'll be in zone 6, something like that. <laughs> Yo Gotti developed a reputation himself in his city of Memphis. He was trapping way back in the day since before the age of 12. Like Gucci, he was no stranger to shootouts with the Ops. During Thanksgiving weekend in 2010, in the parking lot outside of Level 2 nightclub, there was an altercation that left six people shot. According to court records, the incident began with a verbal altercation between Mario Yo Gotti Mims and Lance OG Boo Dirty Taylor. Both Gotti and OG Boo Dirty were arrested for the shooting, but due to no witnesses, the charges were dropped. Before that, in another club, so it was going on more than, it's just the right people got shot where the news can get in on top of it. And... Okay, then both you and Yo Gotti got arrested over that. They dropped the charges. Yeah, yeah, because then nobody come forward and, and, and 
Press charges. No, now either side came to press charges. No snitching really worked there, huh? So as you can see, these two been down in the streets. So I guess that's why they click so well. Gucci and Gotti would end up linking and dropping banger after banger. From Mo Money to Colors featuring Dipset member Joel Santana to Ridiculous and Bricks. The two were running up numbers in the industry. They'd go beyond just dropping singles to releasing projects like their definition of a G and G shit mixtapes. Unfortunately, the chemistry was broken before the two could even take over the industry together, sparking a beef that saw the downfall of their camaraderie as rappers and as street dudes. On October 17, 2012, Gucci was ready to release his mixtape Trap God and take his label and career to the next level. That date was significant in all that because it represented his brand 1017. Turns out Yo Gotti was also releasing the next installment to his music series CM7, The World Is Yours, on the same day as his homie Gucci. And that was the beginning of the end for their friendship. At first, Yo Gotti said he didn't know they were dropping the same day, but when he found out, he took it as him and his homie about to crash the industry. So Gotti claimed he was hype as hell, and he hits up Gucci about their releases, but got no response. And um, it came down to me and homie were dropping on the same day. We didn't know, I didn't know in the beginning. And I found out probably a day or so later. Your phone is hungry for more fun apps. Later, right. you know what I'm saying? But once I found out because he supposed to be my homeboy, you know what I'm saying? I hit his phone immediately. I'm thinking like, oh man, we're going to shut shit, we're gonna shut it down. Yeah, shut the internet down. You get what I'm saying? Like right, me and right. home come out on the same day, it's a wrap. So I hit him, you know what I mean? I hit him to chop it up back there. I ain't, you know, he ain't hit me back, he ain't answer. Thinking it's probably nothing, he tried to get in contact with Gucci again, and still no response. But still, Gotti didn't think anything about it cause that's his homie. So I'm thinking like, you know, maybe he got a different number. You know, you know, you know how, how they be, niggas change numbers all the time. Right. So I, I had coach, I had told coach to tell him reach out to me. He never reached out to me. I still ain't thinking I'm bad at because this folks be my homeboy. Right. But that all changed when Yo Gotti caught on to something Gucci posted online about the situation. So he hit up Gucci's line to see what's up. Later minute, we in the layout, we heard about the tweet. When we heard about the tweet, I hop on, I immediately hit his phone. Like, what's up, homie, you good? You know what I'm saying? And you know, right. we chopped it up, you know? And, and long story short, from that point, I realized that that homie had an issue. For whatever reason it was, uh, 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 his free music and my free music right, right. coming at the same day, you know what I mean? Which Matter of fact, at first, Gotti claims they chopped it up, but Gucci wasn't even on the release date issue like that. But on the fact that Gotti did a song with Ops, T.I. and Jeezy on his I Got the Sack remix. He didn't even speak about what he tweeted. He was like, oh man, you put Jeezy and Tip on the Rex remix. Jeezy tried to kill me. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> what I gotta do with you? Yeah, I'm like... Mm -hmm. After going back and forth on the phone, Gotti assumed everything was cool and got back to the music. So anyway, we went back and forth, you know what I'm saying, about how he felt about the situation. I told him how I felt about it. And, but still then, I still looked at him as a partner. Mm -hmm. So I, after we got off the phone, I tweeted out, look, cool. Gotti saw it as a moment to celebrate with two homies dropping. Gucci saw it as Gotti trying to ride his wave because the 1017 date, which was a part of him and his label brand. My, my main problem with him was um, they dropped his mixtape on 1017 and tried to like ride my wave. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. he was an artist of mine and we get some kind of money together. So I just felt like, you know, for our artists to drop their mixtape on 1017, you know what I'm saying? Which, 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 label? which is the, my label on the day that I drop all my label, every all my label may drop their mixtape on 1017. Why would you drop it if you ain't on 1017? And when I call you as my partner to ask you why you did, you say, oh, I didn't know you were dropping the mixtape. Now the whole world know I'm dropping this mixtape, I'm promoting this mixtape. Both me and you on the top of world star, you would have freestyling me with a video, but you say you're on the world that this mixtape gonna come. And I got a battle that says come out 1017. Once Gotti knew that was the reason why Gucci was slighting him, out of respect, he changed his release date to 1018, the day after. I said, cool. Do your thing, have your day. I come out tomorrow. Right. Like it don't matter to me. I come out at 13 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> your guy they gonna do what your guy they gonna do, period. Right. You feel me? Like that's my attitude. Like I don't have no insecurities or Gucci released on 1017 and Gotti dropped on 1018. But the riff was already caused and it was already about to get worse. 
Gucci went on to release a diss track towards a bunch of ops, including Jeezy and T.I. And in it, he dropped a diss to Gotti with the bar, I used to F with Gotti, till he turned into a buster. I used to fuck with Gotti till he turned into a buster. Publicly, they expressed different feelings over the beef. Gucci saying he lost respect for Gotti, and Gotti saying he was disappointed in Gucci. So it just made me lose our respect for him instantly. Because I looked at him different. What I perceived to him is not what he, he playing out. Sure. You know what I'm saying? The way the, the, the Gucci always knew. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought you was a straight up stand up guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Street type dude and street dudes don't handle business like that. Looking in from the outside, I could understand where Gotti was coming from because Gucci is his homie. So hell yeah, we're gonna drop the same day and take over. But I can also understand Gucci's side for getting upset, especially when Gotti said he didn't know his tape was dropping the same day. This your homeboy, y'all making music and all that. And Gucci was promoting the tape throughout the year too. So how you didn't know Gucci was dropping? Gotti's reason was that he only focuses on his music and he's not the type to be on social media or following what other rappers got going on. It, it's, it's a funny situation because first of all, with like I do my music and I don't keep up with what other people doing. You know what I'm saying? When I'm in the studio and locked in the studio, like, like I ain't walking around no laptop. But if that's your homie like that and y'all making all these tracks and projects, how likely is it to not know your man's is dropping on that day? So I guess that's how Gucci was seeing it. But that could have been something squashed by a conversation. But nope, hood dudes have way too much ego for that, right? So Gucci dropped the diss, and then Gotti returned with a diss of his own, titled Have Mercy. Whatever friendship they had was all downhill. But Gucci was going through it, losing his way and being too geeked up on various substances, mainly lean, something his now wife Keisha Kayor confirmed that he struggled with. Yeah. That's why Gucci had that big stomach back in the day, huh? <laughs> nah, that was lame. <laughs> Straight up. The first two months, he lost like 40 pounds because he was detox. Mm -hmm. All that stomach was lean. It wasn't even fat. While fighting his demons, Gucci had a breakdown and came at everyone on Twitter. Nobody was safe. From Nicki Minaj to Drake to his former artist, Waka Flocka. And you guessed it. Right back on Yo Gotti neck. Gotti didn't feed into it. But in a later interview, he exposed something that may have been triggering to the entire beef with Gucci. Turns out before the whole mixtape release date fiasco, something happened. Gotti had allegedly smashed Keisha Kayor. Damn. How many times dudes gotta learn that crossing a dude shorty is always gonna end in trouble? We see it every time. This played out while Gucci was in jail, which I believe would be for his one year jail sentence for violating his parole stipulations. Bain was handcuffed and taken to jail as after a judge revoked part of Radrick Davis's probation. Prosecutors complained that the rapper had only completed 25 hours of these 600 hours of community service. Gotti talked about the disrespect like it was just a part of the game, saying he didn't know that Gucci was loving on her like that and that Gucci should know how the game go. I ain't know like, you know, like you love and all that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I got you, I got come you. Come on, man, you yeah. know how the gang go. Mm -hmm. Gucci would have even more bad luck getting arrested late 2013, facing 20 years behind bars on two counts of possession of a firearm by a felon after police in Atlanta found weapons on the ice cream man in two separate encounters on September 12th and two days later. That worked out in his favor though because it slowed him down and gave him time to work on himself. He returned home clean to become a father and the boss of one of the hottest label rosters out. Yo Gotti on the other end also leveled up and established a successful label taking over the game as well. Hopefully both of them can get over whatever